Hello, my name is Dorian Ellen Beljotan, and this is my bedroom in Sfat. See, it's all done up in uh, black and red. <laughs> Hearts and black and red and love and uh, flowers and uh, fruits and uh, not just because I like black and red. I got that at the Einarchista Book Fair in uh, in Dublin. I decorate my house like this because I'm a dyed-in-the-wool anarchist. Been an anarchist all my life, actually third-generation anarchist in my family. And I'd like to talk to you anarchists and leftists. Hi there, we're back in the living room. The old man. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm a lifelong anarchist, and I want to tell you why I'm supporting Donald J. Trump for president. Um, I'd like to give you some of my uh, leftist, anarchist, anarchist, communist, uh, bona fides. Um, I have a great uncle who joined the uh, the Lincoln Brigade, which was the American brigade that went to fight with the anarchists in the Spanish Civil War, and he died there. Um, like most Jewish families, um, my family were part and parcel of the Democratic Party because we believed that uh, they were the most humanistic of the two major parties. Uh, I never belonged to the Democratic Party. The first time I voted in the United States, I voted for the American Socialist Party. And being uh, disappointed with their uh, step at a time socialism, I moved to leftward and um, I am an anarchist. I've always been an anarchist uh, in, in my adult years. I have a blog which I'll link to, it's called Holy Anarchy. And uh, the emphasis is, is much on the holy as it is on the anarchy, because if anarchy isn't holy, it isn't anarchy at all. Um, I want to tell you a program into which I was inducted uh, when I was 17 years old uh, to give you an idea of where I stand uh, on this. I finished high school at the age of 16. Um, by that time, I had already read uh, Das Kapital and uh, The Whole Slow. And um, I had been away for high school and I wanted to be home with my mother. So before going away again, I enrolled in Brooklyn College to be home with my mom for a year and I got a, a letter in the mail telling me that I had been invited to come in and uh, fill out a questionnaire and uh, be interviewed for a special program that they were developing at Brooklyn College. Uh, I didn't have to do it but I might be interested. Um, so I went and I got there, and I don't know, there must have been about 500 people there, and they gave us these questionnaires and asked us all kinds of questions. I, I really don't remember them. And a while after that, I got a letter saying that I had been accepted to an experimental program 
at Brooklyn College called the School of Contemporary Studies. Uh, this was the beginning of the academic year, 1978, I believe. And um, they told me that I didn't have to, but I, I would probably find it very interesting. And um, rather than giving us three points toward the 120 points we needed to get the degree, these courses were worth four points. And rather than being on the main campus of Brooklyn College, which is in Flatbush, the School of Contemporary Studies, um, I found a little bit of information about him. It's, it's still kind of a hush-hush program. Um, was off the main campus and it was in Brooklyn Heights on Skirmerhorn Street in, in two buildings there. And um, so I started and, uh, you know, first day of college terror, you know. And I got there and there were wonderful, wonderful people. Um, really great kids uh, from all walks of life and from all ethnic groups and um, we began to take uh, courses which had names like um, very kind of generic sounding names. Uh, yeah, here it is. Um, I don't know if you can see, I got A's in all my courses. I was a model communist student. Um, uh, so that they had to uh, course names like communication skills, human interaction, tradition and mythology, the arts, the self, settings and systems, poverty and wealth, uh, science and humanity. Um, then in the second uh, uh, semester of that year, I took one psychology course on the main campus. Uh, so it was only worth three points. <laughs> anyway. I loved uh, the, the courses. Um, we learned hardcore Marxism and Maoism. Um, the people who were teaching there were all dyed in the wool Maoists. We learned the little red book. <laughs> yes, we did. And we were taught that um, America would fall in 25 years. Now I'm talking about uh, the academic year, was it 77 or 78? My forgettery is working overtime. What's the date on this? Oh, 75, I'm older than I thought. <laughs> right, it is 75. Now I remember the significance of that. Okay. Um, we were told in 1975 that America would fall in 25 years. And um, we, of course, were going to be the, the, the uh, avant-garde, you know, the, the, the cadre of the, this grand new uh, communist society that was uh, going to be built up in... Um, in America and um, I was all like for it you know <laughs> it's great <laughs> what I learned many years later was that as I say this is 1975 this is immediately after David Rockefeller went to meet Mao and was very very impressed with Mao. Uh, about 80 million people having been killed in the Cultural Revolution notwithstanding, David Rockefeller was very impressed. In other words, I was in a course for uh, communism that was being bankrolled by the Rockefeller family. <laughs> Nobody told us that. Um, there was a authoritarianism um, about Marxism that I never liked. In fact, um, if one reads Marx's works assiduously, what you'll see is, is that in his early years, Marx was actually very much 
uh, like a, a, a anarchist in his thinking. He really did believe that the state would wither away and then it would be anarcho-communism. He begins to change. So if you read the economic and philosophical manuscripts of 1844, that's the, that's the way Marx still sounds. It's only when he starts being um, bankrolled by Friedrich Engels that suddenly his work changes and it becomes much more authoritarian. Um, I don't know whether Marx himself actually agreed to this authoritarianism or whether or not Engels was um, pressing him to adopt uh, a harder line, a less humanistic line. Uh, it's probably a little bit of both. Uh, Engels uh, was the son of a, a, a textile manufacturer. He had uh, manufacturer had uh, deep pockets, and uh, he became um, Marx's money bags. And if you have a money bag backing you up, uh, you go along with the money bag. Um, and so Marx became a different Marx. Peter Kropotkin, the anarcho-communist, um, dealt trenchant criticism of the authoritarianism of, of Marxist communism, as did Emma Goldman um, and many other uh, uh, anarcho-communists saw the authoritarian nature of uh, later Marxism and, and rejected it, um, just rejected it. Uh, you can actually see on my Facebook page, I have it available to the public to see, my photo album, My Anarchist Teachers, and you'll see the anarchists uh, with whom I go and flow. Um, so, having established myself as a third generation, very proud uh, anarchist, leftist anarchist, I want to tell you that I was thrown off of every Antifa group I ever joined. <laughs> yeah, I was. And the reason why um, I, I didn't understand, uh, actually, the reason why for a long, long time. Um, they, nobody ever accepted me as a real anarchist, and, and I was like, I was thrown out off one group after another, and I could not understand why, because what I was discussing was classical and anarcho anarcho-communism. I was discussing Kropotkin and, and Emma Goldman, and uh, Sasha and and uh, Gustav Landauer uh, and these these are like my lights you know my my role models in in anarcho-communism and um, I got thrown off of one Antifa group after another and I didn't know what I said wrong <laughs> I just got the hard what is it called? The hard knock? The hard uh, bounce? That's it. I was getting like, the hard bounce and I didn't understand what was wrong. I didn't understand what was wrong until I began to see the behavior of Antifa. In America recently, I guess they realized that I was not from the George Soros uh, school of, uh, of anarcho-communism and um, I had already left the David Rockefeller school of Marxist communism. What I'm trying to say is, is that um, the, the line that is being delivered about what communism is, about what, what anarchy is, is being bankrolled by the likes of the, the Rockefeller family and George Soros. And I have no truck with that whatsoever. Neither did they have truck with me. 
Yeah, I remember I got online one day and I saw a whole list of, of um, people who are considered uh, anarchists in modern times, you know, and my name was not on any of those lists. And I couldn't understand why. I mean, nobody loved anarchism more than I did. Nobody, nobody embraced it the, the, more than I did, you know. And uh, I couldn't understand why they wouldn't recognize me as an anarchist. They wouldn't recognize me as an anarchist because I guess they knew that they that I was a real anarchist. You see that the, the the communism and the anarchy is is serving capitalism, there's no such thing as a somebody being trained to be a communist by David Rockefeller, or trained to be an anarchist and being funded by David Soros, working for $15 an hour for David Soros. Something is obviously wrong. The left was infiltrated and taken off course, and if you notice, they did virtually nothing to narrow the economic disparities. Being left became being tolerant of every kind of, of freakishness and weirdness and, and, and self-humiliation and self-mortification and self-destruction. Uh, 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 and they were doing precious little to, 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 to make things right, to make things just, to make things good, it was obviously completely compromised, infiltrated, and compromised. Um, I'm going to say something that um, I hope that Republicans um, are not put off by this, but I, these are my, my genuine um, impressions. I have never seen a politician who has as much of the anarchist attitude, the genuine anarchist attitude, as Donald Trump. I, I know that, that, that that's strange and, and I'm sure that the rhinos are probably you know like having conniptions now uh, and maybe some of the the, the more um, Trump leaning Republicans don't like what I'm saying either but he is his his attitude is totally anarchist he is so he is so anti-establishment he is such a pain in the ass he is such a monkey wrench <laughs> he, he is he is so disruptive, and he does it in the most wonderful way. Donald Trump is not a socialist. He is not a communist. But what he is, is, you know, like, he is the, his picture should be next to disestablishmentarianism in the dictionary. That's him. Donald Trump is putting America on the track to being genuinely sovereign. Genuinely sovereign. Marx was wrong about thinking that when people became um, totally uh, alienated that they were going to become the healthy revolutionaries in the most um, technologically advanced societies. The ways of, of just putting people down are so sophisticated today that, that people who are poor are just broken. If society is ever going to realize holy anarchy, that is to say a society in which everyone is sovereign and recognizes the sovereignty of everyone else, and that's what real anarchy is. 
you have to start with a position of strength. You have to be educated, you have to have certain basic comforts taken care of, you have to be able to have the free time to learn, and Donald Trump is creating the conditions that will eventually lead to the evolution of a much healthier society. He is doing that more than any Democrat. The, the Democratic Party, I, I, every day I wake up and I say, thank you, dear God, that my mother doesn't have to see this. <laughs> if my mother were to say, my mother was eight years old when Franklin Delano Roosevelt became president. She was 20 years old at the end of, of, of his last term in office. She remembers those days. Those were her formative, formative years. If she were to see the Roosevelt's juxtaposed to the Biden's I, 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 I don't know how she, she wouldn't be able to process it. This is not Mama's Democratic Party. I don't know what became of them, but um, I'm 100% sure that the old Democrats, the staunch Democrats, the Roosevelt's, the Kennedy's, would have no truck with this whatsoever. They would be appalled at what the Democratic Party has become. Far be it for me to ask people to consider being a rhino. But I am asking you, honestly, to look at what Donald Trump does. Don't look at the orange makeup and don't look at the, the outrageous yellow hair. Look at what he does. Look how many companies have returned to the United States having left and voluntarily gave their workers $15 an hour because the tax breaks that he gave them allowed them to do it. Look at how he has reinvigorated Detroit. Detroit was dead. He brought life back to Detroit. He has done more to narrow the economic gap than any other president I've ever seen. He is the most progressive president I've ever seen. Conservatives, I'm sorry to say this to you, but he is. He is the picture of progressive, truly progressive. And he is putting America in a place where it can become a healthy kind of progressive where progressive means something more than covering one's body with tattoos and, 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 and doing all kinds of, of things and, and not knowing what gender you are and switching genders and switching back and, 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 and pressing people who are ordinary homosexuals to think that they're transsexual and doing all these things because there's a lot of money involved right? It's cheap to be a homosexual. You just stay with the body the way it is, you know. But to be a transgender, oh, that's already an industry. Yes? Let's be honest. The, Democrat, the Democrats are the worst of the capitalists. It is Donald Trump who is going up against the worst of the capitalists. Is he the last stop on the freedom train? Certainly not. Do I like what uh, that, that comment that he made about uh, grabbing that girl's um, cat? <laughs> no, I don't. Do I like the fact that his name appears on Jeffrey Epstein's uh, flight list? No, I don't like that either. And I don't like the fact that he was a little bit too familiar with some of the girls in the beauty contests. I don't like that. I'm not saying he's a saint. What I'm saying is he is the pick of the American litter today. And if you want America to progress to a truly, truly 
free and equitable and and sovereign country it's trump who's doing much more for that than anyone anyone in the democratic party the democratic party it's 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 a grotesque of itself. It's 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 uh, I I don't know what happened there. They were obviously targeted for particular um, particular infiltration and subversion. There's no doubt in my mind. Um, the same David Rockefeller who thought Mao was terrific. What they want, what they want, is. George Soros and, and, and David Rockefeller style capitalism and Chinese style um, totalitarianism, social discipline. Because look, the people in China, they have nothing to do with, co with communism whatsoever. They are raging capitalists, raging, frothing at the mouth. Capitalists, people in the CCP own prime real estate in Hong Kong. They have nothing to do with 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 communism. They have an anarchy. No. So the the plan is to have capitalism on steroids, together with Chinese style social control mechanisms. It's the worst of both worlds. And so if you want to see humanity get on a freer track, if you are genuinely, genuinely a leftist, not because all your friends are and the way your friends are and you have to fit in, but if you're coming from a place of love and if you're coming from a place of wanting the best for humanity, Donald Trump is the better of the two choices. He's the best thing on the map today. That does not mean that he is the last stop on the freedom train. I'll say it again. I can't stand his 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 um, his his uh, approach to uh, to nature. He doesn't seem he's in a totally New York state of mind. He really doesn't seem to understand the importance of conservationism. But the, the democratic green energy thing is a catastrophe. There has to be green energy, but not the way the Democrats want to do it. The Democrats want to do it in a way such that you will become the engines. You don't want to go there. You want to go to real conservationism. You want to go to real ecology. And I guess this is my walk away. <laughs> video, I, I don't know. Um, I, I would suggest that you watch some of the videos of the people in the walk away movement because I, I have found a, a lot of what I have seen and felt and, and thought in those videos and I, I ask you please to, to support Donald Trump. Not because um, not because he's the best, but because he's the best of what we have right now. Thank you for listening.